It's the first time the torch has ever been in North Korea and officials there are promising an amazing relay. Well, let's go live to Seoul now and join our correspondent, John Sudworth. John, solidarity from one communist regime to another, pretty much guaranteed no trouble in Pyongyang, aren't they? I think uh, that's uh, one thing we can say for certain. The torch arrived in Pyongyang this morning. It was flown directly from the South Korean capital, Seoul, where yesterday its passage through the city of Seoul was marked by minor scuffles and protests. We can be absolutely certain that those scenes won't be repeated in Pyongyang today. Uh, the, uh, the, the North Korean government, of course, tolerates absolutely no political dissent at all. Uh, the torch is being met, I think you can see the pictures now, by North Korea's second highest ranking official, Kim Jong-nam, who often acts as head of state on ceremonial occasions. It's a 20-kilometer route. The first runner, we're told, uh, will be one of the veterans of North Korea's 1966 World Cup football team, uh, which made it through to the quarterfinals. Always fascinating for us to see pictures like this coming live from Pyongyang, such a secretive uh, part of the world. Pyongyang has been quite outspoken, John, hasn't it, about the, the protests which we've seen against um, China's rule of Tibet that have taken place in other parts of the world. Well, that's right. I think um, at the moment, uh, China's support is absolutely key for North Korea. It has, of course, been a long-standing ally, but relationships have often been slightly fraught. North Korea at the moment finds itself in a very difficult situation, squeezed in some way by a new government in South Korea, a conservative government taking a slightly more hawkish approach. Uh, North Korea this year hasn't yet received uh, any food aid from South Korea. And uh, the suggestion is, uh, with its economy and the state that it is at the moment, it really needs China as an ally. So it's unsurprising, perhaps, that it has... Um, been very vocal in supporting out in, in, in speaking out in support of the Chinese regime, of its policy in Tibet, and also condemning uh, the protests that have accompanied the torch relay in other parts of the world. No sign of Kim Jong Il himself, though. There was some speculation that he may attend. Uh, obviously, this event is is one that uh, North Korea can can use uh, to promote itself to the outside world. It plans. Uh, this uh, enormously extravagant welcome ceremony. We're told that uh, uh, tens of thousands of citizens will be uh, uh, standing alongside the route, uh, waving flowers and cheering a very colorful welcome. So there's some speculation uh, that we may see the North Korean head of state, uh, but at the moment, no sign of him. John, thank you very much indeed. John Sudworth there reporting live from Seoul for us. Well, a special Olympic flame has arrived at Mount Everest Base Camp. The organisers of the Beijing Games will attempt to take this flame to the top of the world's highest mountain. Well, the BBC's Jonah Fisher is in Baida Township, Tibet, about 80 kilometres from Mount Everest. He sent this report. We're about 5,000 metres above sea level in the Himalayas. These women, as you can see, are digging an irrigation ditch. Now, at 5,000 metres above sea level, there's much less oxygen in the air. Uh, and obviously, digging somewhere like this is extremely hard work. I've just arrived at this altitude. Doing practically anything uh, gets me out of breath. So these women who've been both digging and singing as they, as they carry out their work are obviously much better acclimatised to the high altitude than I am. Not many journalists have been allowed into Tibet since the unrest in Lhasa, the capital, and some of the surrounding cities in March. We've been invited, along with a number of other international journalists, to cover one specific event. That's the Olympic torches attempt to get to the top of Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain. Everyone we've spoken to on this trip, everywhere we've been, has been planned by the Chinese authorities. We around in a convoy of buses, so they've basically kept control of who we see and what we do. And that is the great mountain itself. You can just see the snow being off the very top of the mountain. First conquered in 1953 uh, by Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay. The story of the Olympic torches procession around the world has so far been one of protests about China's role in Tibet. The organizers of the torches bid to reach the top of Mount Everest, are hoping that by doing that, 
They'll tra transform it into a story of Chinese achievement. Jonah Fisher reporting, and we do apologise for that terrible mic rattle. We'll have to put it down to uh, excitement on Jonah Fisher's part. Now, an earthquake measuring 5.8 on the Richter scale has been felt across southern parts of Mexico. The quake hit the hit south of the town of Telalhuapan at a depth of 55 metres, according.